In this video, we're going to take a look at this fuel pressure tester. We're going to connect this up to the Classic Mini and just see what the fuel pressure rating is like. All right, so this um, particular kit I purchased off eBay. And I'll just give you a bit of a look at some of the components in there. So depending on what you're actually going to connect it to, there are a various array of different connectors, uh, mostly suited for fuel injection systems. Uh, what we're actually going to do to connect it to the Classic Mini is that we only need a connection. It's not even one of these clip-on ones. It's pretty much just using a rubber hose um, to connect onto the fuel filter that I have in the engine bay. Um, and then that will hopefully give us a reading. So this particular kit cost me around 40 Australian dollars off eBay. You can pay a lot more for more expensive kits. The more you spend, the more different connections you'll get. Um, more connections are obviously useful for different vehicles and older vehicles as well. So let's get this um, connected up and we'll see what the reading is like. All right, in this Cooper S, it actually has an electronic a fuel pump, so an SU fuel pump, which is located in the rear of the vehicle. Um, and then the fuel line runs obviously to the engine bay up to here. I've got a fuel filter here. Um, and then from the fuel filter, the line leads to both of the carburetors. Some minis actually have a mechanical fuel pump, which is driven off the camshaft. Uh, so all I need to do to test the fuel pressure here is just connect the gauge to the fuel filter or even just this pipe here um, and then hopefully we'll see a reading on there. The first thing I need to do though is work out which connections in this kit I'm actually going to use. Okay so let's um, just work out what connections we're actually going to use. So the way this works that connects up to your fuel system then the pressure obviously runs up the line here um, it gets recorded on the gauge here and this when you press this button in here that releases the pressure So obviously fuel is going to come out of that pipe uh, To connect it up to the system. Let me just grab a fuel Filter All right, so this is a brand new This is a brand new fuel filter. This is the same as what I have on the actual mini and If I just want to connect it straight onto that end there all I need to do is use one of these hoses. Maybe the larger one might be better. Yep, that one works well. So that'll fit on there. And then I just need to work out a connection. Uh, this T-junction isn't very useful. Probably the best piece would be this one here. Um, that can go into there like that. I can then use one of these clips, clamps to tighten that down. So I'll use a screwdriver. And now again, depending on what type of vehicle you're using, you're gonna have to do things differently to suit that vehicle. Uh, I'm gonna need another clamp again on the upper end for the actual fuel filter. I'll just get this one ready and that will just directly screw into that fitting there. Okay, so I can do a little test. I've got a bike pump here and what I'm going to do is just connect the end of that hose onto this little pipe here. Um, obviously fuel pressure, when you're measuring it, it's... Um, the actual pressure, it's, in this case here, it's going to be a gas. When you're using the fuel line, it's going to be a liquid. So we'll just see how this works. So I'll just connect that up. And then on the bike pump, I'll just give that a few pumps. And then you can see the needle on that gauge moving up. So that's 40 PSI. I'll just build up the pressure again. Just leave it there so that's 15 psi and then to release the pressure you just press this little valve in and then the pressure gets released okay so i think we're ready to connect this up to the car now okay so when i connect this up i'm expecting 
to get some fuel leaking. Because so, so fuel is going to drain out, obviously, when I disconnect all this. So I've got some rags to collect all of that. And what I'm going to do as well is I've just got a bit of a coat hanger. I'm going to hook that onto the gauge just so I can hang it in here. Uh, I'll have to adjust the angle so you can see it. Alright, so the first thing I need to do is obviously undo this clamp here. And this won't be under as much pressure as a fuel connection in a like a modern day car. The fuel um, pressure will be a lot less on this. I'll just try and get that tightened up as quick as I can. But when we turn the ignition on, we're expecting the needle to move a little bit, but not much at all. Okay, so what I've got to do now is just turn the ignition on. Uh, that'll start up the fuel pump. And then we should be able to see the reading on there. So the ignition's on, and... The needle has moved a tiny bit away from that bar and it's at the correct position where I would expect it to be at two and a half. And then if I press the button, if I release it, we should hear the fuel pump ticking away again. And you can see fuel coming out of that um, hose. So we're just letting the pressure build up again. It's about two, two and a half, so the pressure is correct for this pump. So you can see that it is actually a little bit off the bar. Then I'm going to press that release valve and you should see it move back a bit. There we go, it just dropped back. All right, let me just clear this up because it's making a mess everywhere. Okay, so I'll put my gloves back on. Uh, the first thing I need to do is just disconnect that hose off the actual fuel filter. So the pressure has been released, so fuel will drip out of here, but I'm not gonna get an excessive quantity. Just make sure the ignition's off so you're not getting fuel pumping out. What I'm gonna do is let the fuel evaporate that's on this hose and dripped around once that's evaporated, I'll turn the ignition on again just to make sure I don't have any leaks and probably it'd be a good practice just to tighten these up just to make sure they're all okay. And I'll just take this um, tray of fuel just outside so it can evaporate. So before you pack the gauge away, I'll just show you something that you need to do. If you hold it up and then press that release valve, you're gonna get some fluid dripping out. So do that until everything drains out. Just hold down that release valve and that'll make sure that everything gets drained out of it. Uh, I would recommend just leaving that on the a bench or somewhere safe just for any of the fuel to evaporate. Uh, what I wanna do is just disconnect this piece um, and then put that back into the kit. I'll just leave this bit here in a safe spot just to evaporate for now. All right, I hope you found this video of some use. So I've sort of explained how to connect up one of these to a classic mini, um, a quick overview of the parts that it contains, how to see the reading and so forth. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.